Visiting with Hewell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation. Well, hello everybody, I'm Hewell Hauser. And you know, one of the things I love the most about Los Angeles are all of its hidden, kind of tucked away, secret places. And we are at one of those places right now. At first glance, you would think that we were in this lush, wonderful, secluded kind of a garden. And in fact, we are. But the beauty of this garden is, is that it's located just a mile from downtown Los Angeles, a couple of blocks off busy Figueroa. And this place is very special. And to tell us about this place and where we are is Sister James. Sister James, where are we? We are at the Doheny campus of Mount St. Mary's College. On a college campus. Yes. And here is one of your students yes. right here. <laughs> Introduce yourself. Mariza Vergara. We ran into you as we were setting up to do this program and we told you that Sister James was going to be our guide. Mm -hmm. And what did you tell us? Sister James gave me a B plus both semesters. Instead of an A mm -hmm. or an A minus. Or an A minus. It was like an 89.5% <laughs> and she still did not round it. But that's okay. She's a wonderful teacher. So you're tough. Oh, I well, no. She's notorious be, for being like the teacher that does not give A's. Oh, dear. Well, maybe next time. My reputation. <laughs> nice to meet but she's you. she's a wonderful teacher. And Thanks. it must be wonderful for you and all the other students to go to school on this campus. Oh, it's a beautiful campus. It's, it's like a secret garden coming. It's not like the whole big university. Everyone knows your name. Yeah. And the teacher's like, Sister James is wonderful. <laughs> I have a feeling if you have her next semester, you might get an A out of her. I doubt it! <laughs> <laughs> nice okay, to meet nice you. Day. Nice well, to meet you. Take care. <laughs> well, that gave a little wrinkle to the story, yes. didn't it? All my secrets are out. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, tell us exactly where we are. Well, Huell, this hasn't always been a college campus. It was the home of the Doheny family. Probably your viewers would know that name relative to the Doheny Beach and Doheny a street and Doheny Library, but also it's a family that made their fortune in oil and were one of the movers and shakers in Los Angeles at the turn and early part of the century. So it was an old Los Angeles, moneyed, wealthy, mover and shaker family. Yes. And this is where they live. This is where they live. Their son lived in this house. Across the street we had the home of the um, president of USC that lived here at one point in time. The lawyer lived down the street, other people's, her sister. So a variety of homes that became part of this whole community. So they liked to live together they in did. proximity they of did. each they other. They loved that. And this, even all of this landscaping that we look at, look at this beautiful big tree right here. Right. All of this has a history to it. It's not here by accident. No, Mrs. Doheny uh, wanted to put in trees on the campus that were, or I shouldn't say that, on the con, on her, in on the her yard. In her yard. Because it wasn't a campus. That's then. right. That were native to California. And so she made that one of her objects. And so in the gardens, we have this massive garden, what we call the South Lawn or the South Garden. Look at these trees. Where she and her this team. Big old pine tree here. Yes. And all of this foliage, it's just beautiful. This pine tree right in front of us looks like it's been here for a hundred years. I know. I think some of them might have predated the house even. And then some things came a little bit later. These bushes here that don't have flowers right at the moment but have the California flower, the uh, Bird of Paradise. Mm -hmm. I wish they were vi visible because they well, really had Well, you can't color. have everything well, that's blooming true. all the time. That's true. We're walking under one right now that is as beautiful as any... I know. It gives shade on a hot day. Yeah. <laughs> now, it's a college campus now. It was the Doheny family enclave. Right. How did it make the switch over? Uh, when Mrs. Doheny died, Mr. Doheny predated her death, but when she died, she left the property, including the houses, to the Archdiocese of Los Angeles. And the idea was that it would be used for educational purposes. And the story is that the presidents of the Catholic colleges were called in by the cardinal and the question was who would like it and I don't know if our president raised her hand faster or what but Sister Rebecca was able to get this uh, property so that we could start a second campus uh, here at, uh, at Doheny and we began this one in 1962. Now was this one of the Doheny houses over here? Look at this Louie right across the street. It looks like an old building. 
Yes, this one was, uh, as a matter of fact, Mrs. Doheny, one of her younger sisters, lived in that house at one point And in what time. about this house right this over here next here. to it? It looks yes. like it may be a student center now. There's right. This one's now, it's now our food service and also offices on the second floor, but it was one of the original Another houses. Doheny house. Yes. All right, so far we've seen three Doheny houses, yeah. one there, one there. We started off in front of one. Right. But we have saved the big payoff shot oh, yes. the uh, <laughs> for the last. Look at this, Louie. Here we are at the Doheny Mansion. And this is, you know, this is one of those classic pictures that you see in all the tour books, that That's you see right. in all the brochures about Los Angeles. That's true. This is absolutely beautiful. What's the story on yes. this? This is the actual Doheny home. Edward Doheny bought this for his wife when they were married in 1901 paid $120,000 for it at that point in time. Previously, it had belonged to a man by the name of Posey, and it had been his kind of out of the city house. And the Doheny's took the house and then redecorated it inside and made it their living quarters for the rest of their lives. So this was because they were one of the movers and shaker families right. in Los Angeles, was mm -hmm. probably the center of a lot of activity, social and civic. There was a lot of stuff going right. on here. A lot of parties, a lot of events, probably a lot of business deals that went on with behind these doors. And what's going on in there today? Today on the ground floor, we have it as almost a, the way it was when the Doheny family lived here. And then we have it as offices and also as a residence for some of the Sisters of St. Joseph so who work on the campus. So it's being put to good use. Oh yes, in many ways. <laughs> Before we go inside, Louie, look over here. This is as pretty a shot as I think you're going to find anywhere in Los Angeles. Looking right through the trees, we're yes. looking at... We're looking at St. Vincent's Church. It's on the corner of Adams and Figueroa. And in fact, the Doheny's helped pay for the building of that. And I think it was built in about 1922. Well, it's absolutely beautiful out here. This campus is spectacular. We are pretty proud of it. <laughs> yeah, and it's hidden, just like oh, the students said it was. That's definitely true. The outside of the Doheny Mansion is beautiful. I'm just noticing that's almost like a turret up there, isn't it? Up it on is. the top? Yes, it is. I've always wondered it'd be fun to go up there and look at the view, but I've never found how you get up there. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of architecture is this? Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not totally sure. I know that a lot of the houses on the campus are Tudor and Craftsman, and I'm not sure what they label this. Could be kind of a mix of a lot of kind different of, things. Kind of, yes. And as interesting and as beautiful and as eye-catching as the outside of the Doheny Mansion is, I have already peeked inside. <laughs> and I gotta tell you, we are in for a real treat. That place is drop dead inside. It is. It's beautiful. So you're <laughs> used to people walking in and going, oh, oh no. yes. <laughs> Usually their mouths drop and there doesn't seem to be much that comes out for a couple of minutes. <laughs> well, we're ready for our mouths to drop. I don't know whether anything's not going to come out for a couple <laughs> of minutes because we're pretty good talkers. Pretty, well, that's true. <laughs> but let's go inside and take a look inside this wonderful old Doheny Mansion, which has been sitting here for a hundred years or more. Yes, it was built right at the turn of the century. Well, Huel, welcome inside the Doheny Mansion. Yeah, now this is what, <laughs> this is what caught my eye when I peeked in here. I couldn't believe it. This it's is true. absolutely magnificent. Isn't and this? it must, is this exactly the way it looked when they lived here? Uh, not originally. Actually, they call this the Great Hall, and when they first came here, would you believe, a bare rug on the floor with teeth and all, and then heads of animals, buffalo <laughs> and deer that were hanging out of the walls. It was sort of a hunting lodge motif. Uh, Mrs. Doheny managed to change that and make it uh, a little bit more regal over the oh years. Gosh, so this would have been the grand living room the great hall yes what was the it great called? hall kind of the the gathering place the uh the living room in so to speak and here's the grand dining room yes this is where the magnates of los angeles would have sat and this must have been it this why don't you sit over there and i'll sit over here okay this table has many this is leaves. about the only way i'm ever going to be invited to, <laughs> to eat here 
this but table. this is great. Look at the length of this. This is just wonderful. And if you notice, it has a lot of leaves in it, so it would come together so you could have a small, intimate table in the middle. Mm -hmm. And if you notice, they also have a lot of mirrors. They evidently like to look at themselves while <laughs> they ate. I'm, I'm not quite sure. I've never quite And look at that. this view, looking this through beautiful. here at these rooms. Now, back then, was this considered opulent, or were there other uh, you know, great mansions like this in Los Angeles? I think this was about the, the top of the line, back when the Doheny's lived here. They say that, that she was the belle of society, and so I imagine that everything had to be top notch. One of the things we do have here is we have the first elevator that was in a, a private home in Los Angeles, and it's not every house that has its own elevator. And, you know, and they did a lot of entertaining because of his business kind of uh, dealings and his work. And I'm looking over yeah. your shoulder into the kitchen. There must have been a huge staff here yes. as and, well. Yes. And they, one I'm of sure the, Mrs. Doheny didn't cook for no, all of these she didn't. banquets. No, she didn't. And one of the things that's really evident is when you look in a house like this, the front stairway will be very large in the, with coming from the second floor. And the back, where the help would use, a very narrow stairway. The rooms are a lot smaller. Where is that front? I just walked right by that. Oh, the sure. front. The front. Uh, right. It's, it's just out oh, here. Oh, this too. is such a beautiful. It's a beautiful space. Oh, my gosh. And the fireplace still works, so it's a wonderful place to still have a gathering. Oh, when the, here's When the this, weather is set. Here is this great staircase. Louis, why don't you stay there? We'll, Sister James and I'll come up here and make our entrance down the grand staircase. <laughs> we'll pretend like we're coming down a, to a big party or something. Oh, here we are. Look at this. We need grand dresses and tuxedos. Yeah, here we go. Hold on to my arm. <laughs> oh, righty. Here we come. This is grand. Do you think they would have entered like this? Oh, Probably. I, made I a grand so. entrance. After the guests, some of the guests had gathered. You could come down, make your appearance. This is I've even heard stories of children that slid down the banister here, so I think they had their family times, too. Look at the floors. All Look of at the, this inlay here. All of the floors are parquet. And if you notice, it's the design. The design will be all the way around. Boy. Hidden by some of the rugs, but basically there. It's a shame. Oh, here they are over here. Mm -hmm. It's a shame to hide any of it. I know. Isn't it beautiful? With rugs, more inlaid floors, this amazing... Marble is the, the element that you find a lot in this house. Boy. One of the stories I was reading is that these pillars weren't originally here. They put them in after the 1933 earthquake mm -hmm. because they had to reinforce the house, steel reinforced it, so they added the pillars. Now we've just taken care of the left-hand side as you're walking in. What was this in here? Just kind of a little anti-parlor or something? Right. This room anti here is kind of the reception room. When Mrs. Doheny would have gatherings, she sometimes would greet her guests by being in this room. Uh, one of the unique things about it is the shape. It's a very distinct shape. Sure. What is this shape? It's kind, kind of, of almost like an octagon, but it, then it verges out to be, you know, to enter the rest of the building. The rug was woven so it would match the oh, room. Oh, look, the rug fits the room. Mm -hmm. And the design on the rug also matches the flowers that are around the room and then on the uh, mirror. So all of this is exactly the way it was. Pretty much, pretty much. Some of the uh, furniture has been recovered over the years because yeah. it was getting a little Maybe damaged. we shouldn't have sat down at that table like Oh, no, that's all right. That's still, we still use the dining room. Now, what is this, the piano room? Right, this the is music the room. music room. As a matter of fact, these chairs in here were the original dining room chairs. Ah. And they moved them in here because occasionally they have uh, music concerts. Boy. We actually use the piano. This piano this is uh, a play yell, and if I can remember, it's tulip wood and sandal wood. Oh, look and at this wood. Inlaid. Look at the inlay here. Mm -hmm. This is beautiful. And look at it up here, Louie. On the top, this wonderful, mm -hmm. all of this inlaid work here. Yeah. This was a gift uh, from Mr. Doheny to Mrs. Doheny. And of course, all of the ceilings have all of this busy work up here on yes. them. I'm not sure what you call I that. Know. I know. We had, some years ago, we had uh, some of this repainted. And the man that came in and did it with his son, he was from Belgium, and he did in the, in the room next door and then in here so much by hand, but sometimes just with a rag, painting with a rag to just kind of bring out 
This is Some almost a lost art. Yes. And then this little room over here. This was, is a. Uh, what was this? This looks like another dining it's room. It's another little dining room, in a sense. It's. Uh, well, the this was probably the it, breakfast room. Well, <laughs> it was originally the pool room. Uh, the wood in here is redwood. Oh. Uh, at one point, we called it the ship room because we had a model of Mr. Doheny's ship in here. Look but, uh, at the walls here. And this is this is what kind of wood? Redwood. Boy, this is beautiful, beautiful Isn't wood. Isn't this beautiful? And the paintings that are in here belong to a, a man by the name of Jose Drudas Biata, and he gave us a donation that we were able to build an art building at our other campus, and then part of the thing was we would display his artwork. Oh, this is beautiful. So we're able to decorate this room. Wow. Now here's tour guide, not that you're not doing a great job. Oh, thank you. But right here is tour guide number two, right here. Hello. Your name is? Sister Aline Marie. We ran into Sister Marie earlier today when we were kind of scoping the place out. You were in here doing what? I was looking at the pictures that weren't very straight, but they're still not very straight. You were straight in the pictures and dust in the furniture. No. <laughs> now, you live in this house. Yes, I do. And have lived here for how many years? 36 years. What is it like to live in a place like this? I don't know, because it's, it's wonderful, but, uh, you know, it's just the usual place. <laughs> You're used to it. Yes. Can you understand why we're so excited about being I, here? I know it's beautiful, yes. yes. Can it you is. take over the tour and tell us what this room is right here? This was the library. In here? In here. And she used to have four-edged books and the Book of Kells and the Gutenberg Bible, but they were all donated to the library at Camarillo. So we they're gone there. now. They're gone, yes. And there was another room back here you that, wanted to show. That was her office. Mrs. Doheny's Mrs. office. Mrs. Doheny's office. When he died, she had it paneled with the paneling of his office in the Richfield Towers. Ah, the, the uh, Atlantic Richfield. That's where he got all that money through the oil. Yes. And this is the paneling from his, from oh, Mr. Doheny's oh, original office. Yes. Now, and she would sit here at the desk yes. and do business? And or? It, I think so. I, 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 I don't know. But mostly she loved to read. And these were not uh, knickknacks or uh, objects of art, these, but books. Oh, so this whole area was yes, full of books. And she had a chaise lounge. And when she was tired, she'd go there, pick out a book, and read. Ah. And she did the same thing in the pool room. She she had books where the, you know, that wall where, where the, the cases are, are, where the pictures are, and she would, not the cases, the just the wall where the pictures are, mm -hmm. and she would watch the game that was being played or the pool, but she would read. Ah, so she was a reader. A great great reader. You never had an opportunity to meet her. Yes, I. I no, well, actually, yes, I, we did meet her twice. When we were novices and postulants, we came to sing for her. And of course, I can't sing, but I was <laughs> that part of what it. What was she like in person? A lovely person, very simple, very friendly, and serious, but very friendly. Wow. Well, that must have been exciting That's to sing sad. for. Oh, we've got a picture of her here. Where she sat underneath the... Oh, the painting. The that painting. is a picture of her yeah. reading. Why she was almost blind at the end of her life. You see all the amount of light that she had mm -hmm. there. To was she able. on the phone? In on the phone and she's reading or looking <laughs> at her telephone book. I do not know. <laughs> but she's on the phone and she's resting her phone on a little shawl. Oh, and wow. she always has these flowers. I only came twice and both times those roses and these buvardia were there. So she liked flowers. Loved flowers. Well, that's one of the reasons why she had such a beautiful garden. Yes, and the rose garden, two, uh, two or three rose gardens. Mm -hmm. They're sad this year. I don't know. It's I guess a lack of rain, or, mm -hmm. but they're very sad. Do you work out in the garden too? I don't work out there, but I go pick them. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, let's go meet uh, meet up with Sister James again because this desk is a double desk. Oh, it's on both sides. Both sides equally the same. You know, I think you've given this tour before. Oh, maybe. 
<laughs> when people come in, they want yes, to hear yes, the yes, story. Yes. People are fascinated by this place, yes, aren't it they? It is, it is. They really uh, enjoy it and would uh, even peek in the gratings to see. Oh, they peek in. <laughs> yes, so they can come and see it. I don't know. She had more interesting information than you did. Oh, dear. She's <laughs> That's true. We share about Mrs. Doheny. She's actually she actually met Mrs. Doheny. Yes, and you did too, no? Did you no, come to never. sing for her? Oh, I never I'm got sorry. To sing her. I did no. twice. <laughs> I wish. All right, now we've and saved. I can't sing, and you can sing. I don't know how it. We've saved the very best room. No, that's Sister James Mary. Well, come on with us anyway. Look at this. This. This is, is when your jaw drops. Right. We'll watch. Tell us about this room. Look at this. This is the Pompeian Room. And it was an addition made to the house by Mrs. Doheny in 1906. This used to be an open court. The building ended in those doors that we just came out into. And she had seen this when they traveled to uh, something like this room, when she had traveled to Italy. And she got the permission of the Italian government to make a copy from the Roman Museum and to put this uh, room, attach this room to, the, uh, to her now, mansion. What is this? Is this leaded glass? What it's, kind of? It's called, it was done by Tiffany, by uh, oh Louis gosh. Comfort Tiffany. And it's Favril glass. And I've heard two stories. I've heard that each one of those scallop shapes was $11, and I heard that each one was $18, so I usually tell people it was 15 because it just <laughs> rounds and, it off. And I would imagine at the different times of day, the lighting in it's a different type of lighting. It's true. One of the things that she had made for this room was a glass or a mirror top table that would seat 42 people. So it would reflect. And it would connect it, yes. And because of the shape of the dome, then the shape in the table, it sometimes would give you sort of a dizzying effect like you were going to fall into the table. Now, but what was, was this room used for? For banquets, for concerts, and for dances. Oh, they and would have dances in here. And one more thing. You see all the plugs around? Mm -hmm. She used to plug the sewing machines once a month for the ladies of charity to come and sew for the church and the um, So uh, from the poor. earliest days, she was very yes. involved in the community and doing good for others. I was puzzled for years about this plug until one lady came and a friend of one of the sisters mm -hmm. said to her, I used to come with my mother to sew in here. And she said all the sewing machines were around. Wonder what it would have been like to come here for one of the dances. What it would have it probably sounded good in here. It's didn't? got excellent acoustics in this room. Beautiful. And don't they have concerts in they here? They do. Yeah. The college has a Decamera Society, and they have events that take place in here. Sometimes a piano by itself. Sometimes uh, it'll be a quartet. We've had singing. Um, and, but it's just wonderful acoustics because they don't have to use microphones. They don't have to use amplifiers. And even this, look up here, Louie. Look at these windows right here. These, is this all Tiffany? Uh, we're not sure if it's all Tiffany. We like to claim that, but we do know that, uh, that Tiffany did the, the dome. But oh, these yes. stained glass uh, skylights that are you know, all the way around the room, and they bring in a lot of light. Now we've come out the back of the house, and you can see the glass up there yes, from the top the of the Pompeii the room. Mm -hmm. And you said that right over here was? The carriage house where they had the hay upstairs and the horses down below and at the, uh, before they got their motorized cars, which uh, they were probably one of the first in L.A. that even had that. <laughs> now, we're not here to see the carriage house, though, no, the stables. We're, we're here to see what? We're going to where we have the pool, which is the old palm house. Right now, it doesn't look quite the same. It used to have a covering on it, and it housed palm trees and 5,000 orchids oh my. that belong to the Dohenies. Oh, my gosh. Now it's our swimming pool. Oh, this was gosh. what was inside that big glass. Right. This is the best collection of palms in Southern California. Really? Greatest variety. Inside here? Inside. Mm -hmm. And they say it was very muggy. It wasn't, oh, uh, it wasn't the most comfortable place to come swimming. Do you remember it, sister, when it had uh, the glass? It, when it had the glass, but I never came swimming. 
I couldn't think I could. I don't think I could have stood it. <laughs> <laughs> but the pool was bigger, wasn't it? No, this is the size that was of the, the pool. same pool. Mm -hmm. And in fact, it had a little boat in it, even in that size pool. Really? Not a very big boat, but. Big when did the glass big. come down? Uh, 51, I think. Or, I think. Or 71. I'm not positive. I can't what remember. What happened to all the palms? No, they were transplanted before we came. They were transplanted to various museums, or arboretum, in different parts. Of so they're all over Southern California, California now. Yes, but the orchids also were given away and transported elsewhere. Well, at least you saved the pool and the walls are here and you can see up on the yes. side of the walls where the glass... Yes. yes. We could not save that because the children start, start, started breaking them breaking with rocks. The and oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Not the children of the school, just children. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is beautiful. The birds are singing, and it is an absolutely beautiful day. Do you think that the Doheny's would go swimming out here? Evidently, and they would have parties out in this area? And many of the priests and guests that they had came swimming here. Yeah. And it's still used as an active pool today? Yes, it is. And did you students. tell me there were parties, student parties out here yes, now? Yes, have parties out here. We often have things at the beginning of school for orientation and that, because it's kind of private, and yet it's very nice, especially on a warm day. Yeah. You know, complete with helicopters going over. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you've got a beautiful house. Well, isn't it the most beautiful No, I mean, house. you're still living here. This is still your house. <laughs> well, yes, it is. <laughs> but not really mine, but... I really enjoy it, and I appreciate it, and thank Mrs. Doheny by prayers. Well, I want to thank you all for the tour. That was an unexpected pleasure to thank meet you. you. for coming, and mine too. If you hadn't been dusting, we never would have found you. <laughs> <laughs> she was in the right place That's at the true. right time. <laughs> yes, it was. But it was a great pleasure for me. Stick with us here for a minute, and Sister James, this house, people are going to start calling or coming by right now. It's not open to the public on a no. regular basis, is no, it? No, it isn't. It isn't at all. But we do occasionally have tours. We have uh, an open house at Christmas time, mm -hmm. and people are welcome to walk through the campus. And they can That's see true. the outside of the house That's and right. walk around this beautiful campus with these lush, beautiful gardens, right. trees, and plants planted by Mrs. Doheny years and years ago. That's true. It's really a flashback to a chapter in L.A. history that most of us have either forgotten or never even knew existed. That's so true. So many people drive right by and don't realize what's right inside these gates. Yeah. It's a grand, grand place, as we said at the very beginning of the program, one of those secret, hidden places that makes Los Angeles such a wonderful place to live. And you can't help but stand here and thank the Doheny family for all they did for our city yes. and for all the good that they're continuing to do through their legacy. It's thank been a wonderful you. afternoon. This is a beautiful, beautiful part of our city's history. Visiting with Huell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation.